So Devin Haney gave his reaction to Richardson Hitchens' controversial win against Lemos, where he posted a lurk emoji, or whatever you call this emoji. It's more like a peeking emoji. Then after that, Devin Haney reposted a fan going at Shakur Stevenson after Shakur said, I promise you, if he would have trained down here with me, he would have stopped this ninja. Then a boxing fan responded to Shakur by stating, Hitchens fought like he did train with you. Listen, one thing for sure, as Tom passes by, it shows more and more that these guys are not on Devin Haney level. Two things for certain. It seems like Devin Haney have a curse going on. Anytime any fighter starts hating on Devin Haney, it comes back in full circle. I'm talking about all the way back from Gary Russell to Tiafima Lopez to Shakur Stevenson to Richardson Hitchens and the list goes on and on and on. Anytime these fighters start hating on Devin Haney, they either end up losing like Tiafima Lopez and Gary Russell did or they end up having the worst performances of their careers, just like Shakur and Hitchens. I mean, leading up to this fight, Hitchens was talking so much trash about Devin Haney. You would have had mistaken him for fighting Devin Haney instead of Lemos. He was not concerned about Lemos, not even a bit. He said Lemos was a bum. He's going to show that he's on a different level. Lemos ain't never fought a guy like him. However, during the fight, we found out that Richardson Hitchens ain't never fought a guy like Lemos because Lemos put the beast by Dre on Richardson. This fight was looking like Adrian Broner versus Maidana minus the knockdowns. It was a good close fight. However, I had Lemos winning the fight. And that 117-111 scorecard, that needs to be investigated. Nevertheless, after the fight, Richardson Hitchens said that Lemos, he was dangerous. He had a lot of power. He had more knockouts then he had fights. He fought just like Maidana, and he believes that he will give Devin Haney, Tiafimo Lopez, and all of the top guys trouble, just like he did to him. And I'm over here sitting like, wait a minute, you call this guy a bum? Just because Lemos gave Hitchens trouble doesn't mean he's going to give Devin Haney trouble. What you eat doesn't make me shit. So maybe instead of Hitchens talking shit about Devin Haney, he should be using that time to sharpen up his tools. Because one thing for sure, Devin Haney have an inside game. Two things for certain, Devin Haney is on a different level. Clearly from watching this fight, Richardson Hitchens is missing certain dimensions. One of them is his inside game. We now know why Richardson Hitchens is avoiding Matias. That fight is all wrong for him. Just think about it, if a lightweight who just moved up recently, Lemos, who Richardson Hitchens believed was a bum leading up to this fight, had so much success to the point where the majority of the fans thought he won the fight, including me. Then can you imagine what Matias is going to do, who Richardson Hitchens believes is a dangerous opponent and is actually avoiding him? He's not calling him a bum like he was calling Lemos. Lemos was able to close the gap from the opening bell on Richardson Hitchens. To make matters worse, Lemos was able to land bombs on Richardson Hitchens from the first round, where he actually managed to hurt Hitchens at the same time. This was the story for this fight the entire night. The most surprising thing about it all is that Lemos was able to find Richardson way easier than Richardson was able to find him in terms of landing punches. And Lemos managed to hurt Richardson the entire night. He hurt Richardson on multiple occasions during this fight. Now, can you imagine what Matias is going to be able to do against a guy like Richardson who doesn't have the best inside game nor reacts well to pressure? Matias is even a more powerful puncher than Lemos. He's a bigger guy. On top of all of that, he throws more punches and he puts on a more relentless pressure. He's better at closing the gap than Lemos. So you can just imagine the type of damage Matias is going to do to Richardson Hitchens. This is why when Mannix asks Richardson Hitchens that, you are now the mandatory for Matias. Do you want to fight him next? All of a sudden, Hitchens started making excuses about the weight, which I'm going to make a video on that to debunk that with Hitchens' own words. Then Hitchens started deflecting 
and called out the winner of Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, even though he's not ranked under the WBC. Plus, Devin Haney already got a mandatory anyways. So you know you can't get the shot no time soon, nor are you a big enough name to get the shot. If I was Devin Haney, I will tell Richardson Hitchens, if you want to fight me, then get a belt. Fight Matias. If you beat Matias, then obviously I'm going to have to fight you because I want to become undisputed. So cut the supply. If my supply are the belts, if I want to get to the belts to become undisputed and you want to fight me, then fight Matias so we can unify. Obviously, if Richardson Hitchens beats Matias, then Devin Haney is not going to have no other choice but to fight Hitchens. And I know for sure Devin Haney would love to do that anyways. However, Hitchens have to put himself in position. He can't just be out here clout chasing without putting the work in. If you really want to fight Devin Haney, then you got to put the work in and show us. You got to at least become a champ. You have the opportunity to become a champ. You are the mandatory. So I don't want to hear no excuses about anything. Because after the fight, after the post-fight interview, Hitchens, during his post-fight interviews, he started talking about that he needs a tuna fight before a world title fight. So now he wants a tuna fight. And it's like, wait a minute, why you need a tuna fight for? Hitchens already turned down a title shot against Matias to take a tuna fight against Lemos, a guy he called a bum, a tuna fight where he almost lost the fight anyways. Why would you want another tuna fight where you may lose again? Because truth be told, he lost this fight. However, the judges gave him an Easter gift. I mean, the way Richardson Hitchens is talking, he feels as if he lost to Lemos, so he needs a tuna fight, a comeback fight first. Because regardless of what the judges said, deep inside, he felt like he lost. That's the only reason Hitchens would want a tuna fight, a confident booster type of fight after this fight. Either way, like Devin Haney said, when there's a boogeyman, just give him a call. If Richardson Hitchens is afraid of Matias, it's no problem. Devin Haney will take care of the job. Say whatever you want to say about Devin Haney. Hitchens could talk shit all day. However, Devin Haney is talking shit with his actions because he's telling Hitchens, the man you afraid of, I'm going to show you how to be a real fighter and step to him. I'm not worried about you. Because I'm going after the man you're afraid of. You can't stunt harder than that. And that's a fact. So with the opinions out of the door and the facts laid out on the table, go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below. And to be continue on the next episode of Akhi TV. Peace out. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What are your three dream fights? That you can have. Three fights. Me and Tank, me and Matias, me and Tio. That'd be huge. Devin, do you, you think it'll happen? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Oh, it depends. You know, I know they. I know they want me. I know I'm the guy that. You know, I'm the. I'm the guy that bullies the bullies. I'm the guy that steps up. You know, what I'm saying when nobody wants to. I'm the guy that you know steps in and saves the day. So they might need me to come save the day and go fight um, Matias. They might need me to go because you know guys say they they that they that that they want to become champion but then they say they that oh it's a weight um hydration hydration limit on uh the ibf rules or something like that you can't you you would since when did we ever do this it's, you've never been a world champion before you've never accomplished nothing and you talking about a uh um a, a, a rehydration limit like you somebody you're not you're not nobody so like i said they might need me to step in you know say today and uh bully the bully fight the guys that these guys don't want to fight and uh i will you what do you think and, of and i said i said oh i never i don't know about you know i'm not really interested in being undisputed but now i am so at 140 at 140. what do you make of like the boogeyman aura like the, they're trying to portray to on um, matias not nah, using that to sell him they using that to sell him but he ain't no boogeyman to me mm -hmm. and after this fight if he want if he, if he want to explore the fight i'm no 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 if he wants to fight he's with he's with eddie i'm 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 over here with eddie me and eddie work together that fight could be made you still interested if in 140 if tio, if tio want it 
I'm over here at top rank right now. We can make that fight too. So, <laughs> y'all know, y'all, yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm, you're everywhere. I'm, I'm everywhere. This, you I'm, think I'm, it's the, this, yeah. it, it, it don't matter. I'm, I want to make the, the biggest fights happen with the best fighters in the world because I truly believe I'm the best. And I'm not, and I'm not just talking. I'm not on Twitter just saying this. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm for real. It seems and, like, and my, my, check my resume, it, it shows. It seems like you're like one of the only ones actually doing it where other fighters are just attaching themselves to one and you're no, freely yeah. going around and, yeah. Of the younger guys, I am the only yeah. one.